Alrighty, what's up everybody? Peter fucking Joseph here for a late night video on this late Tuesday night, March the 5th, 2024. Or if you're watching from another time zone, well not another planet, but if you are, then huh, hello. But anyway, if you're watching from somewhere else, it is now March the 6th, 2024. And you are watching right here, right now. On the Peter fucking Joseph YouTube wrestling channel. YouTube.com slash Peter Joseph. Thank you for watching. I am your gracious host. The tribal god. And that is me. The tribal god. The tribal king of extreme. Your undefeated, undisputed extreme heavyweight champion of the world. And the best goddamn runner on this godforsaken place. And in real life, too. And that is me, Peter fucking Joseph. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like the video and subscribe right now to this very channel and my other channels down below in the comments section. And follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Gotta be real, if you're not, fuck off. And rotten hell. Share the video all over the internet. Most importantly, tap and slap that motherfucking bell. Turn on all notifications so you don't miss the next one. Because if you miss the next video or any one of my videos, you're pretty much SOL, and you know what that means. <laughs> oh, boy. So, so, like, share, subscribe. You can leave a comment if you wish, but if you leave stupid comments, you know what happens. Out of here. You are thrown out like yesterday's garbage. And that's pretty much it. Not re Can't be respectful here. If you can't be respectful here, then, uh... You can't you know, be, be uh, a schmuck somewhere else to see what happens to you. That's pretty much it. Pretty much it here. I don't put up with anybody's bullshit, so... You don't like me, I don't care. Get out of here. Go fuck yourself, because I ain't going anywhere. And you can't do a thing about it, so I don't care. I'm not going anywhere, regardless of what people say. And that's that. Anyway, and this is if this is your very first time watching, you're just floating around YouTube at this time of night, or day, or whatever, whenever you're watching it, you just floating around YouTube, you see my gorgeous sexy face, because I have the golden voice and the silver tongue. Right, ladies? But I digress. Uh, but if you like what you see, you want more, then please subscribe to my channel, hit that like button, stick it straight up, Everybody else's ass, because that's where it belongs. Just show them you're watching me and not them. And that's, that's it. So thank you for the support. Welcome to the channel. And we hope you enjoy the ride. So welcome to the party, pal! Sit back, relax, and uh, grab cold one if you want. Yeah, we drink Pepsi here. Pepsi is the drink of champions. Any type of Pepsi. Pepsi. Uh, wild Cherry Pepsi. Uh, Diet Pepsi. Regular Pepsi. Pepsi. Vanilla Pepsi. You know, even um, Mango Pepsi. You know, the orange one. I don't like that one particularly, but to, to each dorm. Even they had uh, Pepsi Fire at one point, which was like cinnamon. Got a kick, but it wasn't that great. At least it wasn't like Pepsi Clear. Pepsi Twist was pretty good, you know, the lemon lime one. They should bring that back. We're not the Osborns. No? We're the Osmonds. I'm a little bit of country. Shannon! I hate that commercial. I hate it. I mean, I like it, but I hate it because the Osmonds are in it. Fuck the Osmonds, by the way. Donnie Osmond, you are a bitch. Because you stole Dancing with the Stars away from Kelly Osbourne in Season 3. Just want to point that out. I don't watch Dancing with the Stars anymore. That show is rigged. So bad. Even Jack Osborne was on the show, and what happened? He didn't get that far. 
did pretty good, but still didn't get anywhere near where Kelly won. She was top three. Should have been. Should have been the either the should have won or at least get the runner up. I would have been happy with the runner up. At least Do, if Donnie Osmond was like number three, fuck him. He just gave it to him because he's Donnie Osmond. Fuck him. What's that? I mean, The Miz was on one one season, did very well. I was surprised. I was like, The Miz can dance? Wow. Yeah, but they, they pick people that actually can dance. And they pick them, and most of them win. But then they, they get people that barely can dance. And then they suck. And then people are like, oh, we feel sorry for you. We're going to make you go through the next ten weeks. I'm like, yeah, and then ten weeks later, they come, they're like dancing fools, like I'm gonna dance and dance and dance and dance and sing my night away. I'm like, oh yeah, like five weeks ago, you sucked. I just go on the show and break dance. Fuck, fuck doing salsa and mer well, merengue personally, I, I know how to, I know the cha cha, you know. I just hate going to clubs and then you know. You go, you go to a club to have fun. You 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 dance in the night away to some hip hop, reggae, reggae tone, and then you know maybe some eighties you know come on, maybe some nineties metal comes on once in a while, every so often depending on what club you go to, and then if you go like to some like like the Copacabana, to play some hip hop, to play some reggae, you're dancing, you're grinding on grinding on each other, and the next thing you know, la 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 bamba, I'm like, the fuck. Like, what the f- what? Like, I wanna kill the dirt go strangle the DJ! Why are you playing salsa music when we're- I'm getting my freaking dick pleased by a hot Puerto Rican chick. Or any chick. You're playing fucking salsa. What the fuck is wrong with you? Damn you! Damn it, I'm like, how am I gonna, you know, I can't really dance to this. But at least if you were like a hot- Puerto Rican chick, at least a uh, Spanish chick, and they're like, oh, look, I'm gonna dance, dance the cha-cha, I'm like, uh, okay, I can't dance to this music. And then you have to wait a certain amount of time for hip-hop reggae to come back on, I'm like, oh, okay, fuck that. <laughs> I just whispered in the girls, and I was like, I'm gonna get out of here, I can't dance to this shit. And then I'm like, you want a drink? Let's go to the bar. I get drunk. Fuck that. No, I just like, I just like talk to her. It's like, I can't dance. I mean, I love salsa music and I like merengue, you know, but I, like, I can't really dance to it. I mean, you were pleasing my dick pretty damn good. And then, buzzkill! Fuck! Then next thing you know, the girl's like, oh, I'll please your dick later. Well, I bet. I bet. Then the next thing you know, they dance with some other dude. I'm like, fuck. And then later, you know, you're dancing, they dance with some other guy. I'm like, well, fuck that guy. Fuck that bitch. <laughs> and then you're dancing with some other chick. Next thing you know, the girl that you first danced with comes back to you at the end of the night. Says, hey, big boy, you want to go want to go back to my place? and Swap spit and I'll rub your dick even more? I'm like, pfft. Like, where were you, where were you, like, 45 minutes ago? I saw you dance with some other dude. I'm like... I'll make it worth your while, I bet you would. <laughs> I bet you would. But guys, never, and I mean never, Give up on free pussy. You go to a club and some girl wants to take you home, you go home. I don't care where she lives. Depends on, well, there are some limits. There are limits. I remember going to a club, One, I was dancing with this chick. I, I didn't even know these chicks. Well, chick first, and then her friend came in. I was just dancing by myself. My friends were somewhere around the, around the club. I'm freaking dying. The freaking club is hot. They're dancing around me. I'm just like hanging out. Blah, blah, blah. Next thing you know, I'm like, I'm like, 
And I go, I go to one of one of the girls, hot Puerto Rican chick, by the way. Uh, I said, hey, you want to get drunk? I'm gonna. I was like, I'm gonna go. I was like, they, they were kind of fighting me, you know. They were kind of dancing with me, up, nice, not dancing up on me, but per se, but like dancing around me. And then it was starting to, you know, dance with me a little bit. Then it's like, I'll be right back. I'm gonna get a drink. You want one? I'm like, I'm being nice. I had, I had a little extra money on me, so I'm like, you want a drink? It's like, yeah, sure. Went to the bar. Her friend, I bought, but me, <laughs> I bought myself a fucking water. Cause I wasn't gonna. Well, I did have one before that. Had a nice handy and coke before that. Then I was like, I'm drinking water. Water's free, so I got free water. I was like, What do you want? I had an extra twenty bucks. I'm like, Yeah, buy whatever you want. What them drinks? Tip my tip my waitress, of course. No, tip my bartender. And then, next thing, <laughs> you know, we go back to the dance floor, freaking dancing up a storm, and then more fucking salsa music comes on. I'm like, fuck. And I started, I tried. I tried. I danced with the chick. She was vibing me and blah, blah, blah. She's like, can I get your number? I'm like, sure, I guess. Me and me without my phone. I gave her my, my number, put in her phone, Blah, blah, blah. And then I wanted to dance with her for pretty much the rest of the night. And then she went away. I was like, fuck. I kind of followed her. Like, I, I mean, wasn't stalking her per se, but I followed her because I wanted to hang out with her and everything, blah, blah, blah. And then somewhere, like, an hour to, an hour goes by. I kind of lost her for a while. And then I went back to my friends. And I was like saying, hey, you know, I was dancing with this chick. I gave her my number. She ain't going to call me. <laughs> it's like, oh, good, Pete. Yeah. Not like the last time you did, right? I'm well, like, yeah, if that girl wanted to bang me. Holy shit. She did. She did, but, you know. I didn't score, but. Cause she was out of it, I mean. Plus, she was like a friend of my friends, so she was like dancing on me the whole fucking night. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. And she knew she wanted she wanted it too, man. I got a whisper in my ear, I want you. I was like mm, Do I do I do it? Do I take the free pussy and not say anything or do I take the free pussy anyway and you know my friend kicks my ass. That's the limits. And the other limit is, if with, depending where they live. But anyway, this girl I danced with, she lived in fucking Jersey. It's like, oh, fuck. I'm not going to go to Jersey and bang this chick. But she was with her friend and another guy. I was like, oh, I'm not going to risk going, going somewhere. I don't know where the hell I am. And then I'm stuck. So I'm like, nah, I got to go. My, my friends have got my, I got my, I got my ride. You know, my friends are driving me home. So he gave me a hug, a kiss on the cheek, and I left. I'm like, fuck this chick. I was like, call me tomorrow. Tomorrow comes. <laughs> no. I like, I wasted my fucking number. That's what happens. You go to the club, you meet a hot chick, you give her your number, or she gives you your number, and either you call, you try to call her back, she's like, oh, I don't know who the fuck you are. I'm like, uh, I'm Peter from the club, but you gave me your number. Well, I don't remember. I was half drunk, but obviously. It's happened before. I, I, I did that a couple of times, but I call the number and they don't answer. I'm like, fuck. I left a message. I'm like, hey, this is Peter from the club. But you gave me, gave me a number. You know, thought you were cool and wanted to maybe hang out. You know, never got a call back. Sucked. It sucked. But when I go to the club with my friends, you know, they they bring girls that are that are friends with them, and some of them are friends with me. You know, we have fun. They dance up on me, they flirt with me. Crazy shit, man. I remember one night, I went, I was like, the night before my birthday was crazy enough. I went to the Copacabana in New York City. Right near the end of the night. 
go downstairs, because the upstairs was closing, so we went downstairs, it was still kind of open, we were just hanging out, they were still playing music, and I'm just vibing, I'm hanging out, dancing, blah, 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 one of my friend's girls that was with us, just like, it's like, she must, I think she overheard my, my friend say, hey, happy birthday, Pete, you know, smack me five and shit, and then one of the girls must have overheard, it's like, oh, it's your birthday? Okay. She just, like, took me, and, like, I went, she, like, drove me into a, like, drove me into a wall. She, like, grabbed me, and, like, pushed me back, and she, and freaking, I'm on behind the wall, I'm, like, on the wall, she starts going, like, turned around, started dancing to me from behind. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Birthday, you know? Birthday grind. Blah, 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 blah. And then another girl that was hanging out with us, that was good friends with me, started going going behind her. I was like, damn, I'm, if I only had, a, you know, six hands, you know? But, and then, and then a third girl came behind me. I had a sandwich. I was like, damn, this is great. I'm going to have the best fucking birthday of my life. I'm going to have a fucking four-way. I'm going to have a, my own fatal four-way, if you know what I mean. Blah, blah, blah. So, club, club, club goes bye bye. Club closes. We go to we go to my friend's car. Drive home. We can pack car. And the girl that was originally dancing with me, I'm sitting next to her, and I'm just chilling. Next thing you know, she just like she was like out of it. She was like drunk anyway. So I was like, whatever. I didn't want to mess, you know, mess, mess with her, because my, she, she was going out with my friend, so I was like, don't touch the merchandise, you know, I show Michael, say, hands off the merchandise, anyway, so, <laughs> so, long story short, she fell asleep on my fucking shoulder, and I'm like, well, gotta be something, I know, I want my shoulder to, to freaking die, I'm like, oh, you know, Freaking, I put my arm around her just to get myself comfortable. Make her comfortable. Next thing she know, her head goes, boop! Right on my dick. I'm like, why get up? Why get up? She was gone. I would have been a dick and pulled, pulled, pulled out my dick and let her suck it while my friends are driving. I would have been, I've been, I've been really savage, but I'm like, nah. And then she just, like, opened my, my pants. I'm like, um... <laughs> Hold it in. Hold it in. <laughs> and God forbid my friend would have saw that. He's like, Pete, what you doing? I'm like... She fell on my lap, dude! What am I supposed to do? What, am I supposed to stop? She's fucking going to town on my dick. What, what, what do you want me to do? Stop? Moron. <laughs> oh, man, I miss those clubbing days, man. I was like 21, 22. Back in the day. Oh, I miss those times, man. I had fun at the clubs, man. I, I, I had fun. Going to Pit Master back in the day. When I was in my college days, we used to have, go to parties. It was like a club right across the street. Like a mini lounge. Right across the street from my... From my college used to hang had parties there, and I every so often would go over there. Then they had the student council, uh, student building, the student council building. There were there were some parties there, mostly with the cheerleaders and and the uh, basketball team. I went to a couple of them, a couple a couple of the cheerleaders danced for me, but it is one of I, I actually knew one of them. I went. I went to the lounge one time. She was dancing. I I, didn't, I got that late because I was doing my radio show. I was like, hey, hey Pete, you gonna come? Not come, come. But you know what I mean? Like, you gonna come to the party? I'm like, I'm doing my show. It's like, yeah, come after the show. We'll be still be here. Ten o'clock at night. I finish my show. I almost I almost locked my I almost locked myself out because I almost forgot my Metro card. 
Actually, my Metro card and my key card. Well, thankfully, somebody else had a card, so I went up and got my stuff. Came right back. Like, shit. And I had my key, got my keys in my house, too. Not this house, mom. Oh, yeah, dance with, dance with cheerleaders and, um, dance with a couple of my friends on the radio station. I have that picture somewhere on my Facebook, I think. It's somewhere. I have it somewhere. Ah, the, the good old days. Yeah, pass you by, glory days, you know. Somebody get Bruce Springsteen on the phone. The boss. Not Sasha Banks. That's that's the female boss. The boss is Bruce Springsteen. Born in the USA! Okay. Or the parody. Born in East LA! Good old Chi Chong. You gotta love him. But anyway, all right, I'm gonna I'm not gonna delve into my past and my Crazy days and crazy, 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 crazy nights. Sorry, Paul. Let's do it. Oh, no, hey, Paul, stop. I didn't mean it like that. Cut that out. I'm not gonna sing all night, but it is what it is. But yeah, I had great, I had a great time in college. I miss college. Long time ago, in a, in a land far, far away. I was a man in college. Had a good college education. 4.0, my friends. 4.0. I'm so smart. Unlike certain people I know. But I digress on that. Anyway. Let's not dabble into the college and stuff like that. Alright. Anyway. Blah, 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 blah. Alright. So, thank you all for watching here on the channel. My name is Peter Joseph. If you didn't know that by now. You're a tribal god. You're a tribal king of extreme. Better than you and, you, and you fucking know it. Thank you for watching on the channel. Hopefully, hopefully you watch for the last 20 minutes. If not, well, too bad. You can fast forward. Still a view. Thank you. Asshole. But anyway, I'm Peter Joseph. Thank you for watching. And I hope you had a great Tuesday. It's Tuesday. It's not two for Tuesday today, but it's Tuesday. Well, now Wednesday. But anyway, on this late Tuesday night, March the 5th, 2024, or like I said, if you're watching tomorrow or anytime, it is now March the 6th, 2024. It is time for your late night NXT review for March the 5th, 2024 from the Capitol Wrestling Center in Orlando, Florida. All right. This is NXT Roadblock. So we got we got a little pothole to get through, roadblock per se, on our road to stand and deliver. Coming up in about a month from now. Well, a little under a month from now. April the fifth. 2024 from that shithole in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. At the, uh, I don't even know what arena is that. I think it's at the Spectrum. I don't think it's at the Licorice Center or Licorice or whatever the stupid name is. But I don't know where NXT is going to be. I think it might be at the Spectrum where uh, SmackDown and Raw are going to be. But anyway. It's going to emanate, I think, at 11 or 11, I think 11.30, they said. 11, 11.30, somewhere around there. Early morning, pay-per-view. Well, at least it's not 5 a.m. I hope they never go back to Australia. I, I hope they don't. I know they, they think they, they might, they say they, they want to go back to Australia. Ugh. That was a nightmare, getting up at 4.30 in the morning just to watch the pre-show. Really, I got up at 4.45 to watch the main show at 5. Eastern time. That's that's just rough, man. That's rough. You have to, even, even after you watch fucking uh, Rampage on, fr on a Friday night. Then you go to bed, you get up at like 4.30 in the morning. Take a piss. 
or shit or whatever. And then you fire up the stream or whatever you're watching it from. And get ready. And then you, you know, you watch for about an hour or so. Then you, you know, then you step step away for a minute when there's a break in, in between matches. And then you fire up a fresh pot of coffee. Wake yourself up. Because the best part of waking up is focus in your cup. <laughs> but, but yeah. You have a fresh pot of coffee ready. You have about four glasses. And then maybe if you want some breakfast, you go on Uber Eats or DoorDash and grab yourself some McDonald's. Get whatever you want from McDickles. I mean McDonald's. Get a nice sausage, egg and cheese McMuffin with a hash brown and a well, you can't get coffee. Well, if you want an extra cup of coffee, why not? They always have a fresh pot of coffee at McDonald's. But, I digress on that. But, yeah, early morning pay-per-views, like 5 o'clock in the morning, mm, they're tough to get through. And then after the pay-per-view ends about like 9, 9 o'clock or so, then you go back to sleep. And then you don't get up for the rest of the day. Unless you want to watch Collision the next night, but whatever. But, I mean, it's like watching the G, uh, yeah, Wrestle Kingdom or the G1. Hmm. Getting up, yeah, I mean, stay, either staying up till like 3.30 or 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning and watching the entire show. But, Wrestle Kingdom, you can do that. Because you don't even need a fresh pot of coffee. Just grab, just grab some alcohol. Works for me. Works for me. I'm pretty much gone by like six o'clock. <laughs> six o'clock in the morning. I'm like I'm, I'm like I'm like third Henny and Coke, third or fourth Henny and Coke. I'm like oh, I'm wired. I'm I'm done. I freaking you know roses with me watching the G1, G, uh, the G1 or Wrestle Kingdom. We're just we're just like hanging out, and we're like, we're like uh, teaching you about New Japan Pro Wrestling. You know these are all these Japanese guys. Oh, he kicked him in the dick. You know. I mean, it is what it is. She, my, Re, Rosa loves the G1. I like the G spot, but that's just another story for another time. But she loves New Japan Pro Wrestling. And yeah, she did meet Shinsuke Nakamura. Oh, oh, Kata! And a whole bunch of other people. At uh, Field of Honor uh, 2 and 3. I think it was 2 and 3. Had fun. Shinsuke, Okada, Tanahashi, Shibata, Goto. Ooh. It, was, it was just paradise right there. Me taking pictures with these, these great men and Rose to take a picture and then she took a picture. Because she's hardcore. Yeah, Rosa is hardcore in the bedroom and in and out of the bedroom. You don't want to. You don't want to double cross her. She will fuck you up. I know from experience. Sixteen years almost. Pretty much sixteen years from the d this date. A month from now, it'll be sixteen godforsaken years with the old ball and chain. She loves every single second of it. But I digress. Alright, let's get to NXT. Let's not deal with that anymore. Alright, so, Roadblock. Pretty good show. Not great, but pretty damn good. Uh, we, had, we saw the return of two former NXT women's champions. That's the beautiful Asuka. Nobody is ready for Asuka to my dick. And Kylie Zane, my first two wives, the women's tag team champions as they take on the NXT Women's Champion currently, Lila Valkyria Galassi from Ireland, and the creepy bitch, Tatum Paxley. We got that. And in our main event, we had Carmelo Hayes, the man who shoots and, well, pretty much misses sometimes. Mm -hmm, him. He takes on my cousin, or I'll talk to my... Well, he's sleeping right now. Um, well, he might be getting up soon. You know, it's some late night. Uh, my, my legit cousin, Tony D'Angelo. 
for the right to fight to face Ilya Dragunov at Stand and Deliver for the NXT World Title. And will Trick be here? Hmm. We'll see. Alright, so we move on. Alright, so as always, our commentary team of the man with the creepy jacket and a lot of candy, and that's Vic Joseph, and the man who smokes more weed than you do, and that's Booker T. Saga. Oh, yeah! I like it. Trick with it. Okay. We'll talk about him later. Anyway. So let's move on. Alright, so like I said, pretty good show. And it starts off with an opening video uh, of Lexus King in a Lexus outfitting. Uh, looks at how this is the last big stop on the road to stand and deliver. Okay. I don't know why you had Brian Pillman Jr. open the show. I would have had Tony D open it, but that's just me. Uh, that too. Alright. So anyway, we go to the ring. And we're off and running on Rope, NXT Roadblock. And we start off with match number one. An Asylum match. For those of you who don't know what an Asylum match is. It is a steel cage with weapons. And the only way to win is by pinfall or submission. You cannot escape the cage because it don't count. This is the second ever Asylum match. The first one was Jericho and John Moxley, otherwise known as Dean Ambrose at the time. A couple years, uh, a few years ago. That was crazy. Barb at barbed wire. This weird stuff. And freaking Jericho getting planted into the thumbtacks. Mm. Not the first time Jericho has gone hardcore. You know, you know Jericho what I'm talking about, right? The man you fear the most beat the fuck out of you. Nick fucking Gage. Light tubes, glass. Ugh, it was fucking ultra violent. All we needed was some fucking C4 explosives. Would have been epic. But it is what it is. MDK all day, baby. You know about that, Cody, right? Cody Rhodes, you. Bitch. You're ready to cry in about a month from now. Cody cry baby. Gonna lose twice at WrestleMania. Now I think Seth's gonna lose. I think Seth's gonna take the pin on night um on night one. And then night two, he's gonna lose again. To Drew McIntyre, it's probably going to open... I heard it's going to open the show. Well, obviously. So, Seth will be, like, dismantled from night one going into night two. And he's going to come out limping to help his boy, Cody, you know, the whole Avengers thing. And then in turn, oh, sorry, Cody, you failed. He's going to turn... He is going to turn on Cody... And I'm going to love it. If it's not at night one, it's going to definitely be on night two. So I know there's going to be a lot of chicanery on night two. Whether it be bloodline rules or not. Something's going to happen. And, I, and, I, and Roman is going to retain... And we keep going. The game continues. I don't even know what ending we're in. Paul hasn't said anything we're at Endgame yet. I mean, Cody and Seth think it's Endgame. Mm-mm. Nope. Not even close, Cody. Not even there. You think you have an ace in the hole with The Rock maybe turning on Roman. Possibly. But still, that ain't even gonna help. You ain't, you ain't gonna beat Thanos with a, with a freaking... With Iron Man, Iron Man, Dwayne Johnson. Remember how Endgame ended? The Avengers Endgame? How it ended? Fucking Iron Man. How, how does Iron Man... Oh, I'm like... Uh, I'll spoil it. I don't give a shit. How, do, how the fuck does Iron Man get the Infinity Gauntlet? I mean, and, he, and that's the end of the fucking movie. I'm like, what? 
That's not how the fucking comic book went. Where the fuck is Adam Warlock when you need him? I'm not talking about Black Adam. That movie sucked. That movie fucking sucks. So bad. Oh, and you thought Final, uh, Fantastic Four 2 was bad. Or Silver Surfer. Woo! Actually, Silver Surfer 1 was pretty good. Second one? Mm-mm-mm. And they want to reboot it. And they rebooted uh, Fantastic Four. No. The reboot sucked. But then they wanted to, now they want to reboot it again. Okay, reboot it. You want, and then put, you know, you know what you do? You reboot it, bring back Jessica Marie fucking Alba as Sue, uh, as Sue, uh, Sue Richards, and then you get actual good looking people to play, you know, Reed Richards, and, 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 well, I was okay with Michael, uh, what's his name? Michael Chokas? You know, the guy from The Shield? Not that shield. The guy that played, uh, you know, Ben, the, sh the, the thing. Then he had some, some guy, I was like, who the hell the fuck is this guy playing the Human Torch? Who the fuck is this guy? And then the guy that played Dr. Doom was like, who is this guy? Good movie, yeah, partly a good movie, not great, but... Seeing, seeing Jessica Marie Alba half-naked was price of a mystery for me. Not the first time I've seen her half-naked. But She's done a lot of uh, scenes where she's, like, half-naked, or you see her, you know, she's topless, but you see her uh, underwear. She hasn't really done, as far as I know, she hasn't really done... A, a full sex scene. Technically. I mean, she did one with uh, the, that transporter guy. I forgot the name of the movie. I was watching it the other day. They were just like getting it on. And they get in the bed. And like he grabs, he, like, grabs her leg. And I think he pulled, pulled off her underwear. So she wasn't really naked until like after the, like, the after scene. You don't see her naked. You just see her. You don't see her tits either. I mean, you just see her like half, a little bit, a little bit of, a little bit topless, but you know, barely. You don't see her tatas and anything like that because she doesn't. I think she's like the type of person that that doesn't do that. I think she said in an interview, oh, "I don't, want, I don't want to, you know, be fully naked or anything like that." Was it my parents or something like that? I'm like, you're forty something years old. Why can't you have a sex scene? I mean, come on. I'll be first in line for that shit. I still have a humongous crush on her. From ever since the fucking Dark Angel days. Mm -mm -mm, she was smoking hot. Not saying she is now, but she is still smoking hot now. Even though she has like, what, two, three kids? Bastard! Should have been me. Freaking Elijah Dishku could still get it. I think she's married now with kids. If not, I, I, I'll i step up to the plate. Bang that fucking hot ass. Hmm. She looks so good as Faith at, back in the Buffy series. But when she went... When she had her guest appearances on Angel... Mm, and you thought Elyria was hot. Woo! Fred, Fred, I'm uh, sorry, Fred slash Illyria after she turned into Illyria. I miss that show. I miss Angel religiously. I miss that. I have all, every season on DVD. Where I can tell you things from front to back in that series. Pretty much. Not, uh, not all of it, but uh, pretty much like 95% of the series I know almost by heart. You know, Spike is in it. A few, a few episodes. You're a bloody puppet! That episode was funny when Angel turned into a puppet. <laughs> and Spike comes into his office. Hey, Angel, how you doing? Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Why, what's wrong, Angel? And he turns around. Buff! Oh my god, you're a bloody puppet! That is hilarious. Then they had the musical, which I thought was ridiculously dumb. Not the first time a show has had a musical. 
The originals had it. I hated that one. Freaking, and, and um, Legacy had a musical episode. I was like, what is this? I want to see Hope Michelson kill somebody. I'm like, what is this? What is Klaus Michelson doing a freaking, freaking song and dance? I'm like, the guy is a freaking vampire. One of the greatest vampires. Not ever, but. Put it up, please put it up there. I say between him and Eric Northman, probably the greatest vampire in the history of vampires. Hmm. Him and, I would like to see him and Klaus go at it. Somebody call Alexander Skarsgård. And then the, the actor that plays Klaus. Let's get a one-on, let's get a one-on-one -on -one movie. Or at least a guest role, some shit. <clears throat> that too. But... Man, I miss the originals. I miss I miss legacies, and it's pretty much both of them are gone. I don't know what any of the cast members are doing right now. I did. F I used. To, I don't know if I still do, but I think I. I used to follow Claire Holt. who used to play Rebecca Michelson. I follow her on um Instagram and Facebook, and pretty much everybody else I don't even follow, which sucks. But I do follow Alexander Skarsgård. You know why. Eric Northman, the greatest fucking vampire in the history of vampires. Change my mind! Change my mind! If you think that Eric Northman is not the greatest vampire of all vampire movies or TV series, and then you got problems. Oh, what about Blade? Fuck Blade. Blade would get obliterated by fucking Klaus Michelson. Both are day walkers anyway, so... Who has the better stealth? Uh, Klaus. Not even Elijah could fuck Blade up. Well, maybe he could. Marcel! Mm, that's a toughie. That's a toughie. That's a definite toughie. Marcel versus Blade. Hmm. I'd love to see it. Let's call Wesley Snipes and th see what he thinks. Oh, wait. Uh, I haven't heard from that guy. Whatever happened to Wesley Snipes? I know he, he was in jail for a long time with tax evasion. Killed his career, basically. What well, might have been? I'm sorry, Billy. Am I am I am I getting to you, Billy? Oh, Billy! I want to screw. I mean, I'm thirsty. I want to make love. Billy, white men can't jump. That's a good movie. That's a good movie. Freaking Woody Harrelson's a dick, but still. Freaking, freaking Rosie Perez. Mm. I know she's from the Bronx, but damn. She's too old now, but she still looks hot. Anyway, move on. Alright, so let's get to this Asylum Cage Match. Uh, and like I said, uh, Weapons Cage Match. So we had a lot of weapons in there. We had a fire extinguisher, chairs, uh, Casey Jones cricket bat hanging from the cage. Somebody call... Somebody call Johnny Nitro! Uh, we had some weird box that said, do not open. Straight jacket. Uh, a door. A table. We had a lot of fucking weapons. Crazy. But anyway. So, it's also with Dijak sending Gacy into the cage. No blood as usual. Uh... Then kicks away at him before going to the box labeled, Do Not Open. So Gacy gets in a shot of his own, uh, closes the box, but then Dijak, like, attacks him. Then he opens the box and gets hit in the nuts with a boxing glove. Uh, somebody's been watching Jackass. Hi, I'm Joe Gacy, and welcome to Jackass! 
Uh, Gacy then hits a Death Valley driver for a near fall. As we go to break, we come back. Dijak hits a big time moonsault off the top of the cage. Woo! That was nice. Phase one. Wah! Loved it. Uh, and then Gacy got put in, well, some, uh, got put in a street jacket. Not fully. Uh, he suplexed Dijak down, loads up a table with his smiley face on it. Have a nice day. No, I had to say it like Mick. Have a nice day! I came to say it. I'm sorry. That was a that was a very, really bad impression. That was really bad. Have a nice day! No, you can sit up. Pepper! Mick, go away. And get those I don't I don't want no Doritos. They're very tasty! Uh, I don't want any! I don't I don't want any. Go away. Go back go to sleep. Do something. Cactus! Oh no. Terry, it's late. I'm sorry. What do you want, Terry? I wanna talk to Cactus! Terry! What do you want, Terry? Cactus, you fucking idiot! How many times do I have to tell you to stop messing with Peter Gilmore and and giving him Doritos late at night, you fucking idiot! I'm gonna burn you! No, the fire! The fire! They burned me, mommy! They burned me! Okay. Cactus, I'm not gonna burn you, you idiot. I love you. I love you too, Jerry! Okay, guys, get out of here. Ugh. Satire, my friend. Satire. You gotta love it. You don't like my impressions? Fuck you, man! I'd like to see you do it better than me. <laughs> you can't. Oh, you never will. But anyway. Uh. Anyway. Alright, so he pulls up the table with his smiley face on it. But it takes too long. And then, um. Gacy knocks Dijek off the ropes through said table. Then he goes up top, hits a swanton bomb for a near fall. Then he, like, gets out of the straight jacket. And, you know, Dijak's, you know, beating up Gacy for a little bit. And then, with nothing else work working, Dijak runs him over and then wraps duct tape around Gacy's eyes. Sick. And that crowd's chanting, This, this is crazy! This is crazy! I'm like, you think? Two nut jobs in the fucking ring. Um, even, even they had a door and Dijak went through the door. That was, that was crazy. Then he go through it like you, you know, you would see someone get thrown through a door. Break, like if you, if you could watch GCW. Guy goes through the door like so violently, it's crazy. Or if you watch uh, Onita's company, they have exploding doors now. Oh, Jesus Christ. What, what do they think of next? Exploding fans! Knowing Onita, he would think of that. He would think that. He would think that, that crazy fuck. We have exploding barbed wire, exploding ring, landmines, time bomb matches, exploding bats, exploding kendo sticks, exploding toothbrushes that look like bats, exploding tables, exploding ladders, exploding chairs, oh my! I mean, next thing you know, some some fan is like strapped up to a whole bunch of explosives. He just comes in the ring, jumps off the top rope. <laughs> Not only does does the guy on the bottom get get the worst of it, but you know you have like body parts flying all over the audience. But knowing those creepy bastards in Japan, I'm like, oh, that's good, that's good. We have sushi after. Oh wait, we got something in the ring. Meat. Oh, it tastes like chicken. But knowing those crazy fucks in Japan that follow Onita, he would do something like that. Exploding fans that are just spontaneously combust. This ain't celebrity deathmatch, Onita. Stop it. I'm Johnny Gomez. And I'm Nick Diamond. Good fight.
Good night. I missed that show. I mi I mi I missed Celebrity Deathmatch. That was the shit back in the day. Ozzy was like champion of the universe. He never lost. Same thing with Marilyn Manson. And then he had the goat of all goats, The Undertaker. And then Stone Cold. And then Vince McMahon got beat up on The Undertaker. <laughs> uh, good. Got killed too. Kill him! This in peace. What? I said West in peace. What? Damn it, Austin. What? Anyways, blah, 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 blah. So, uh... <laughs> so, Dijak blinds Gacy with the freaking, uh... The duct tape. And Gacy somehow hits a swinging rock bottom. I don't know how the fuck he did it. But he hits it. But then Dijak grabbed the kendo stick and, like, kicked his ass after that. Like, beat on his ass. Then he hits, feast your eyes. A couple of times and didn't get the pinfall, but he hit a, hit a third one and knocked Gacy the fuck out. One, two, three. This wild and crazy match, which is pretty damn good. 3.5 out of 5 stars. Dijak gets the win. I wanted Gacy to win. At least he can be even in this little feud. This crazy as fuck feud. Now it's that. So Dijak gets the win. Uh, then we see Gacy slumped in the corner, still smiling. But it looks like this feud is now over because later on in the night, Dijak goes up to Brooks. Uh, not Jensen. Sorry. Oh, uh, Josh Briggs and says, "Oh, we got a problem." Hmm. So it looks like. Dijak's like, well, I'm done with you, crap, creepy man, Gacy. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go uh, beat up some meat, and that's Josh Briggs. So, see what happens to that, and see what happens to Joe Creepy Gacy, and that's uh, that's that. But like I said, three and a half out of five stars, and we're off and running on Roadblock. All right, then we go to the back where we have my cousin. Hey, cousin, wake up, get over here. I am sorry you, I woke you up, I'm sorry. Get over here, my cousin, I love you, my cousin. Hey, cousin. My cousin, my legit motherfucking cousin, I am not making that up. He is my legit cousin. And that's Tony D'Angelo. You know what he does? He gets you a big, fat, huge plate of chicken parmesan and pasta. You know how much you pay for it? Well, I pay for it. Two dollars! Because he's my cousin. He, he, he could go in the kitchen right now and fire up the, the, the fire up the stove and make me some calamar for two dollars. So that's how great he is. The goat. Not the goat of all goats. We know that's the Undertaker, but he is the goat of all Italians. Of the modern era. But anyway. Alright, so Tony D is talking to Adriana Rizzo in the back. And then Stax, Channing Lorenzo Stax, comes in, hypes him up for his match with Mello later on. And then um Stax says, uh, I got my friend uh the law that Lord that attorney guy, you know, Luca's at the door. He says, Let him in. So Luca comes in. And introduces himself to, to Tony D. And Luca's like, can you can you get I mean not Luca, sorry, uh, Tony D's like, can you get this done? They they kinda have like a little discussion, if you will, about things. And Tony wants him to be the consigliere, the the lawyer, his advisor. And Luca, being Italian, is like, I'm in. So Tony's uh so Tony's got his consigliere. His lawyer slash advisor. So if he's ever in trouble, you got a lawyer. You got a guy. You got a guy. I got a guy. You got a guy. I got a guy. So there you go. So more family members. And how fitting is a guy named Luca? My name is Luca. I live on the second floor. I live downstairs from you. 
Ah, uh, good old Suzanne Vega. You gotta love her. I love that song. That was a great song in the 80s. Among all the... <laughs> among 6,000... 6 million other 80s songs that kick ass. Because the 80s are kick ass. 90s, not so much. The, like, the, the first... F- I would say... The first five years of the 90s were pretty... Decent. Gangster rapping and grunge basically killed that. Metal was barely seen. And then it came back in like 97. 97, early 98 with, you know, with the uh, the birth of uh, new metal. You know, like Slipknot came around, Corn, Limp Dick, I mean Limp Biscuit, who still sucks dick. Uh, uh, what else? Creed, Nickelback. Lamb of God, well, Lamb of God came in the 2000s, but, you know, Pantera was up and coming in the early 90s, in the late 90s, they kicked, they kicked ass, but they, but he had all those, those new metal groups like Linkin Park, Soundgarden, well, Soundgarden is kind of falling off the radar, Smashing Pumpkins, Pearl Jam, and, you know. All those grunge bands went way 96, 95, 96. And out comes fucking Limp Biscuit, You know? Breaking stuff. Making Zach Wild pissed off. Limp Biscuit still sucks, dick! Man, they do. They still suck. They were good when they first came out. First three albums were pretty damn good. And then Gold Cobra comes out. Pfft. I hate... Gold Cobra sucks so bad. If you think you like it, I mean, that's that's your opinion, but I hate it. I hate Gold Cobra. I hate Limp Biscuit now as it is. I can't get into them anymore. Well, even if, you know, even if I listen to break stuff or, you know, rolling, 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 rolling. You know, it's, that's, you know, it's good and all, but it takes me back to, like, WrestleMania 17, 18. Back to the Undertaker days, you know. American badass days. You know, Kid Rock. My name is Kid! I still like Kid Rock. You know, he's kind of like country-ish still. I don't know what he is. He hasn't made an album in a long time. The last song I know he, he did was that Joe Biden song. We the people! Fuck Joe Biden! Yeah, pretty much. Fuck you, Brandon. Yeah, Joe Biden won Super Tuesday. Who gives a shit? Who gives a shit? Look, he's nobody's running against him. Pretty much him and Trump are basically doing nothing. They're campaigning across this great land against nobody. So why are we having primaries? Why are we having Super Tuesdays? We know who's gonna be the the you know what's what's gonna be come like. June, July, August. We know it's gonna be Trump and Biden too. Electric Boogaloo. We know it's gonna happen. Biden's gonna get obliterated in the freaking um the presidential debates because he can't debate anybody. He's so warped out of his fucking mind, and everybody's gonna believe this guy. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna fix things. You ain't fixed shit. Three years, dude. What have you done in three years except make the country look like shit? You have all these fucking foreigners coming from Venezuela, Costa Rica, and Mexico coming into Arizona, California, Texas, and they're going all the way to fucking New York City. And they got another another bunch of idiots like Eric Adams and Kathy fucking cunt Hochul. Saying, oh, we love you guys. Come into our fucking city. And then beat up a whole bunch of cops. And act act like a fool. This is fucking New York. Get the fuck out. I can't wait. Next year, next year I can't wait to get rid of Hoko and, and Eric Adams. Get them out. They're worse than freaking uh, the Blasio and uh, Cuomo. Or as I call them, Homo. But at, at least... Uh, Cuomo did some good stuff during the pandemic. Not great stuff, but... A few things he did here and there, but... But freaking 
thinking Biden is going to get obliterated in the presidential debate. Vice President debate, that may, that might be actually good to look at. You know, that cunt Kamala Harris again against whoever is the vice president that's running with Trump. Most likely to be Tim Scott, the great man he is. I like Donald Trump. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, Donald Trump. Should be uh, DeSantis, just saying. But DeSantis is just going to be the god of Florida. You he could, be, could be the god of Florida, but can you lower the prices a little bit down there? Just saying. I'm just saying. It's hard to live in Florida. Hard to live anywhere in this fucking country these days. You want to live somewhere cheap? Pfft. Good luck trying to find somewhere cheap. Oh, California. Nope. Gavin Newsom was like, oh, fuck that. You're paying $3,000 for an apartment. You paid a lot of money for your muffler in California. Believe me, I know. Not that I live there, but I've been there. Not cheap. Not cheap. Depending on well, depends on where you go in California and all, but I've been to LA, I've been down the down the Sunset Strip at the Troubadour, the Whiskey A Go Go, the Rainbow Room. I, I've been in uh Lemmy's room, Lemmy's lounge, whatever it's called. I've been there. Great place, man. Good food. Good food, good music. I mean, Troubadour, they have good music every once in a while. Whiskey at Go-Go is like the place to go, man. That's the fucking shit. That is the shit. I love the Whiskey at Go-Go. I like, Troubadour's okay, but not great, but... Whiskey at Go-Go, the Rainbow Room... Pretty much everywhere you go down the Sunset Strip, during, you know, if you want to go see metal bands, that's the place to go. The places, I should say. But, but I would highly recommend the, not the Troubadour. I mean, Troubadour, if you want to go to Troubadour, that's fine. But I would definitely go to the Whiskey A Go-Go, because you can see Metallica if you wanted to. Various bands would just come out of the woodwork and come, come, come to, come to uh, the Whiskey A Go-Go. Even Def fucking Leopard play there. They kicked ass. I think Kiss played there once. I think. I gotta look that up. But I think they did. They were doing that club tour. I know they did one in New York. Back in the late 80s. I think it was late 80s, early 90s. They were playing. They were doing a club tour. They were like doing random clubs. And they came to. I forget which one in New York. But they kicked ass. But yeah. Poison did, did fucking did the whiskey a go go, and Poison's coming back on tour. Holy shit! Brett Michaels, my good friend, CC Deville, Bobby Doll, not Barbie Doll, Bobby Doll, the bass player, and my good friend Ricky Rocket. Gonna put up some YouTube stuff, dude. What it is, what it is. Yeah, Poison's coming back for a Greatest Hits tour. But they are going to have some new music. Thank the Lord. Been a while since we got new music from Poison. Those, those great men. And yes, I did meet Brett Michaels. I'm so gifted. I love myself. I thank Rosa for that, because... Uh, when Brett Michaels was doing his uh, Pet Smart tours, he used to work there. Don't work there now. But anyway, he did the Pet Smart tour, and uh, I went there. I was working at the time at a different job, and I went over there. It was like right near my my uh, my music job at the time. It was like a little hop, skipping, jump away. So, so I went down. I went down to. The, the pet smart that he was at, well, uh, and Rosa met me and everything. We met Brett Michaels, you know, got a shirt. I don't have the shirt with me at the moment, but I have it. Uh, you know, we, I talked to Brett Michaels about The Apprentice when he won. Then he went on, the, on he did this uh, another season of it, where they brought back all the all the champions 
and freaking Trump fired him, I think it was like the first or second episode, I was like, what? You made him win the first, you made him win, and then the next time you have him on, you fire him, I mean, you're fired, I don't care if you're a rocker, you're fired. That sucked. And then I asked him if Poison was going on tour, I said, yeah, we're going on tour sometime. He's a good guy. Brad Michaels is a good guy. Poison's a good band. If you don't like Poison, well, fuck you. That's that. But, yeah, they're coming back on tour soon. I don't know when, but I'd like to see them. Hey, if I can see Creed... <coughs> if, I, I, if, I, if Creed's coming back... If, if Creed can come back for a reunion tour at Madison Square Garden on November the 28th, the day after freaking Thanksgiving, then Poison can come back. I'd love to see Poison this summer if I had them. If I hopefully I can go and I have the money. I'm ready going to see Creed. Yeah, I like Creed. So what? Want to fight about it? Well, they they go back too. Nothing wrong with it. Oh, you like Nickelback? You suck. Yeah, you listen to Justin Bieber. <laughs> you listen to Miley Cyrus. Why don't you buy me some flowers? You're a fucking slut. I came in like a wrecking ball. No, you're just gonna bust my balls with your crappy music. SHUT UP! Fucking whore. It's a party getting Wednesday! Okay. Yeah, that was when you were good. And now you're like, like, you're dressing like a fucking slut, you think you're Madonna. Stop it. There's only one Madonna, even though she's like 70 years old and... Ugh. Supposedly she still kind of looks hot, but not really. I would have, I would have fucked Madonna like thirty years ago. Not thirty years ago, it's just twenty-five years ago because I'm forty-seven. But back in, pretty much back in the eighties, early nineties, you know, where it was like justify my love stuff, you know. I would have fucked her, man. Hell, if Wayne, if Wayne, Cam, if Wayne Campbell can fucking basically have. Try humping sex with her, and, and you could too. I don't know, Wayne. Let's get out of you. Get you. Get you. Get you. Hey, is that Prince? Get you. Get you. Get you. Bye, Madonna. Bye, Wayne. Call me. Oh, really? Not. <laughs> okay. Some people say I look like Mike Myers. I don't know where you get that from. I look like Matthew Broderick, pretty much. Pretty much me and Matthew, the younger version of Matthew Broderick. Not the, not so much the older version. Shall we play a game? Alright. Move on. Alright, so uh, Tony D has, has a lawyer now. Luca Crucifino, the newest member of the family. The familia. I mean, we're not for... You couldn't refuse... Why a nice little steak? Nice little Chianti and a little mountain. It's great. Uh, I'll tell you how I'm going to do it. Okay. Alright, get that. Alright, after that, we go to the back. Someone like in catering, I think. We had Fallon, don't call me, to the Don Henley. She's talking to Riley Osborne. About his date with Thea Hale that didn't go so well. Oh well, sucks for you. Uh, so Riley was worried that things didn't go so well. Well, obviously they didn't. But Fallon says that Thea got some bad advice from JC Jane and Jasmine Nix. And then Blair Davenport comes in. We haven't seen her in a while. Comes in and starts mocking Fallon. It's like, oh, you're trying to steer her, man, you slut. You know? 
So then, so then they argue, and Ryan's like, "This is awkward." Then we have a match coming up later. Why not? All right, so uh, so I gave that two point two five out of five stars. I gave Tony D segment three point two five out of five stars. All right, after that we go to Tatum Paxley creeping up on Myra Valkyrie on the last seat from Ireland. And says, we're going to be more than friends after tonight. And Lyra's like, uh, what? And he's like, no, we're going to be champions. We're going to be the women's tag team champions. And Lyra's like, yeah, exactly. We're going to stay on the same page. And then Pax is like going in and out of like, oh, yeah, we're going to become champions. I'm going to be more than friends with you. Lyra's still like half. I don't know what's going on. And then Pax is like, I'll do anything and I mean anything to win the titles tonight. And I'm ready to take out someone's soul. I'm going to swallow your soul. And then Lyra's like, for me or for the titles? And then Tatum's like, well, does it matter? Of course it matters. You win the belts and then you can swallow my soul. She is creepy. Man, she really gives off Daphne vibes, man. Creepy. Big ups to you, gravy girl. I love you. I miss you. Anyway. Come on, on three years with Daphne's death. Hmm. This August would be her, uh... Or besides her birthday, it would be her third year anniversary of her, her passing. Ugh, not good. I miss her every freaking day, man. But seeing Tatum Paxley kind of emulate her... Mm. Gives me gives me those memories. And that's it. Alright, so I gave that 2.25 out of 5 stars. Max number 2. A belch. No. Max number 2 for the tag team titles. We have the Wolf Dogs. Braun Breaker. And Baron Storm and Corbin. This is the Taylor Sex Spellow. So the Wolf Dogs take on Chase. You. Of Mr. Chase, Andre Chase, and Duke Hudson. As they came out with Dia Hale, Casey Jane, and the beautiful Jasmine Nix. Mmm, scrumptious. Anyway, it was a pretty meh match. Uh, so, so Mr. Chase and Barry Silver Coleman start things off. Coleman hits a big right hand to start. And then Duke Hudson gets knocked to the floor. And we get a spinning face plant. Puts Mr. Chase down. Then Braun Breaker comes in, runs over Mr. Chase. Uh, Duke Hudson has to make the save on a pin attempt. Then they send the champs to the outside. Mr. Chase hits a big flippy dee -dee -dee off the apron. Take both of them down as we go to break. And the Chase U section is like, Yay! Chase U! Go to break, come back. Mr. Chase gets driven into the corner. Because as always, during the commercial, the heels come back. Uh, sets up Braun Breaker's belly to back. Gilmore Cutter. Hmm, that's sick. You stole it, but still a sick move. Gets a near fall out of that. Mr. Chase gets Mr. Chase, excuse me, gets right back up. And gets the hot tag to Duke Hudson. Comes in like a house of fire. Hits a swinging big boss man slam or the black hole slam for a near fall on Baron Snow McCormick. Uh then Mr. Chase comes in with a frat liner, not flat liner, frat liner for a near fall. Uh, Corbin and hip tosses a running Mr. Chase into the corner. Ow! And then Braun Breaker dies off the apron. The clothesline Duke Hudson over the announcer's table, which did not break. I am the table! Uh, that uh, leads them out of the match. And then there's Mr. Chase and Baron Sue and Corbin left in the ring. Mr. Chase tries to do his, his best, but his best was not good enough. Goes for a high cross body. He hits it. For near fall on Baron Corbin. And then Corbin comes back, hits the end of days, and then Breaker tags in, hits a mean fucking spear, knocked Mr. Chase out of his fucking sneakers. One, two, three. The Wolf Dogs get the win and retain the tag team belts in a match. I gave two and a half out of five stars. And that's pretty much it. 
Uh, later on in the show, we find out there's going to be a tag team elimination tournament coming up to see who faces them, faces them at stand and deliver. And we'll see who wins that. Personally, I don't care who wins. Actually, I kind of do because I think uh, we're going to get new tag team champions because I, I would... Because Breaker's on SmackDown now. He's 2-0, 3-0. Corbin might be coming back to SmackDown to do I don't know what. But probably get new tag team champions. Uh, probably a standard deliver. I, like I said, I don't know who it might be. It could be, you know, out the, you know, the Bariqua Gangsters. It could be, you know, Ben Frazier and A-Kid. It could be Luca Crucifino and... And stacks teaming up. Who knows? Could be Gallus. Uh, I don't know who else. But we'll see what happens with that. Anyway, we move on. Uh, after the match, Dia Hale consoles. Uh, Consoles Mr. Chase and Duke Hudson. And then starts freaking out. He's like, ah! And then she starts running away. I guess the coke, I guess the meth, you know, kicked in, huh? Or the, yeah, probably the weed, too. You know, she, she smokes that weed. She's crazy. She's, she probably smoked the bowl before the match. And then it probably, I think the hit didn't kick in until after the match. Oh, well. We get that. Let me move on. All right. Then we go to Carmelo Hayes' uh, uh, dressing room. He has like four cops there with him. And uh, Quinn McKay is there. Or Kelly Kincaid. Uh, Melo's not impressed with Tony D. And he's ready to get his NXT title back at stand and deliver. Because he is him. I am they. We are them. We are legend, for we are many. The Saiyans? They're, they're here. I are I. Am. We are they. I am them. For you, Omega Shenron. <laughs> Did he just hit him with his eyes? Obviously. Obviously! How do you think he went 50 feet? He just like pfft, threw, himself, you know, threw himself fifty feet back. Fucking Gogeta. Yeah, Gogeta had to go freaking Super Saiyan Four. Well, he wasn't even Super Saiyan Four. Well, yeah, technically, actually, technically, he was because there was few Super Saiyan Fours, so it's Gogeta Super Saiyan Four. But but I mean, I mean, it wasn't even good because it was just Goku being stupid. And Vegeta trying to actually be normal. But then him him back acting like a dork. Vegeto. Vegeto is way better than Gogeta. I don't care what anybody says. Would you call Goku and Vegeta? Vegeto sounds nice. Yeah. It is what it is. Alright, so Melo's ready for Tony D in the main event. That's it. Alright, match number three. We go to Sean Spears, the chairman of the board, who made his debut last week at those uh, vignettes that we've seen over the last couple weeks. So, uh, he made his return, beat the fuck out of Rich Holland. So, he makes his uh, in-ring debut or return. And he's taking on some guy named Uriah Connors, who... Evidently enough, is Fit Finley's son. I'm not lying about that. Go look it up. Google it. Just Google it. Not like how JD would tell you to Google it and buy his stupid fucking shirt. Probably hasn't even sold any. Huh. Yeah, if you did buy that, burn it. Please, burn it. Uh, so yeah, he's taking on Uriah Connors, who is, like I said, uh, Fit Finley's son. And Sean Spears wins in basically 76 seconds. 
Uh, hits him with a C4, the Death Valley Driver. Bing, bang, boom, Spears gets the win. Pretty much a squash match, two out of five stars. And then afterwards, he gets on the mic, talks about how it is hypocrisy to be forced to be what you are instead of what you truly want to be. What you want to be. I'll tell you what you want. I want to really, really want. Okay. And uh, that must hit home to Rich Holland, who is lying when he says he fights for his family. And if this was between me and you, Rich, I'm not ashamed of what I am. So then Rich Holland comes out and uh, hits him in the face with a punch. Uh, then Spears goes to the outside, grabs a chair, slides it in the ring, and then referees come out because Holland grabbed the chair. He's about to swing and really knock Spears into the next year. And they're telling Rich, don't do it! Don't do it! Don't do it! And Spears is like, come on! Hit me! And Rich's like, oh, you, you son of a bitch hit me last week! And what does he do? Just does nothing. Fucking pussy. Fuck the rash, man. Fucking hit him. What's, what's the worst thing happen? You knock him out. If it was me, I would have took that kid. Like, Fuck you guys. Pfft, hit him anyway. Fuck you, man. So, Rich Holland, fuck you, man. Pussy. Pussy. And that's it. Alright, that's that. So, uh, later on we find out that we might, we're gonna get Sean Spears versus Rich Holland next week. Should be good. Got that big slobber knocker, if you will, next week. Alright, after that, we go to the back. We have Briggs and the resident virgin, Brooks Jensen. They're in the back. Uh, Briggs tries to talk some sense into Brooke Jensen, uh, because he challenged the North American champion, Oba Wakanda Forever, Femi, for the North American title next week. I thought it was this week, but it was next week. Uh, Jensen's like, nope, I'm ready to kick his ass. I'm gonna bring back that North American title. So, he leaves. I mean, Briggs is like, okay, good luck. So, Jensen leaves. Jack comes in. And says, Briggs called Jensen his brother, but lied right to his face. And Briggs says, Briggs, uh, yeah. And he says, you, you must know that Jensen's going to die next week. Pretty much. So I don't know what's going on with Jensen and, not Jensen, sorry, Briggs and uh, Dijak. I think Dijak's trying to, like, turn Briggs heel again. Oh, that is heel already? I don't even know. I don't know. I don't care. So I gave it two and a half out of five stars. Alright, then we go to the back with Kelly Kincaid once again. And she has the champ. Oh, you crack it off. He's in the back. He's ready for, uh, for either Tony D or Carmelo Hayes at stun and deliver. And then stacks. And Luca Cusafino, the consigliere, come in. And they say Tony D will be seeing him at Stand and Deliver. Well, that's, that's right to the point. Mission statement. The Don is going to face you at Stand and Deliver, there, Mr. Dragonoff. Let's see. We'll get that. All right, so I give that 2.5 out of 5 stars. All right, back to the ring we go. We got the women's tag team titles on the line. We got Lila Valkyria and Tatum Paxley taking on... The Kabuki Warriors, my two, two out of the three of my hot Asian wives, Kyrie and Asuka. And we have Alicia Taylor, who, holy shit, what was up with your hair, dude? Her hair was like way out there. But anyway, we got the big match intros. Uh, Asuka and Kyrie coming back to NXT. Asuka still has her undefeated streak, if you didn't know that by now. But, I think that's on that. Uh, so, so, so with Asuka and Lyra, which doesn't really go anywhere. Kyrie comes in, starts hammering away on Tina Paxley, who starts crawling over to her. We have, like, a spider match. Like, they're, like, crawling like, little spiders. Like, what the hell is this? 
and then they slug it out. Kyrie snaps off a head scissors, only to have Asuka get in a cheap shot from the apron. And he gets a bulldog into Kyrie's kick to the titties for a near fall. Then we come to the back where Thea Hale uh, tries to fight Keanu James and Izzy Dane. They had to be held by referees and other people. I was like, that was weird. Okay. Alright, then we go back in the ring. Uh, Tatum sends Kyrie into the corner to stomp her, stomp away to her. And then Booker T says, we'll hear about the uh, Thea Hale brawl on the internet, obviously. And then Vic Joseph mocks internet reporting as the... <laughs> you mock internet reporting. Don't believe everything you hear on the internet. Anyway. Uh, then the champs get sent to the floor. So we go to break. Come back. Everything breaks down. Myra hits a DDT on Asuka. Then a Fisherman's Buster. Uh, gets a near fall on Kyrie, And then more chaos happens. Uh, Asuka gets put down with, with a, a in, in Sagiri. Uh, Tatum comes in and they hit a backbreaker top rope leg drop, which almost felt like AMW's finisher. Was that the last rights or... Uh, not Eye of the Hurricane, that's, uh... Uh, what's his name's move? Uh, James Storm's move. What was, it, what was that da their name in the move called? The last... I think it was called The Last Testament. Something like that. Some weird move. Name it for it. Anyway, they hit that on Asuka. Kyrie makes the save for the uh, to save the titles. Kyrie then clears out Myra, and then Tatum's in the ring. Well, poor you. They hit the insane elbow reverse DDT combo. One, two, three. Kyrie and Asuka retain the belts. Obviously, they weren't gonna do that anyway. Match was okay. Three out of five stars. So Kyrie and Asuka now go to Monday Night Raw this Monday night. And they will face Zoe Stark and Shayna Baszler. And I would not be surprised we get a title a title change, but I doubt it. I think we're going to get the title change at Mania, which will suck. That means Asuka's going 0-7. Uh, why don't you just do the title change Monday night and then have the Kabuki... Uh, yeah, have the Kabuki Warriors try to get the belts back at Mania. Instead of having, like, a four -way, uh, fatal four-way for the tag belts. And they don't even have to be pinned to lose. So, technically, Asuka won't be 0-7. You have that little asterisk, 0-6-1, I guess. But she's, she'll be winless at Mania. She has to have a win at Mania. She has to. They have to win. Kyrie and Asuka have to win. It makes no freaking sense to have Asuka... You have Asuka come in at WrestleMania 32, which was red hot, undefeated in NXT. She comes to the main roster, beats basically everybody, and then she loses at WrestleMania 32 against Charlotte fucking horseface Charlotte Flair, when she could have took on fucking Ronda Rousey, which would have been better. And what happened after she lost the freaking horse face shoulder flare? Her career went. Pfft. Then it kind of went. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Like a freaking EKG machine. Boop, boop, boop. Pretty much, pretty soon it's got a flat mine. And she's gonna, you know, she's gonna be back to obscurity with, like, well, Asuka's, Asuka, Asuka should just go back to Japan. Take Kyrie and Eo with you. But, you know, the Black Lotus Triads, you know, they're running a muck right, right now, you know. EO and, and freaking. EO's, you know, getting looked at by Jade Cargill. And then Monday Night on Raw, Mommy, Rhea Ripley came in and get, looked at her and said, Stay out of my territory. And EO's like, Pfft. Why? Why can't we just get EO and, um,. You and mommy like a unification match for the for the women's title. You and Jade would be good, but if it's for the title, then you know Jade's gonna obliterate her. 
still, even even without the title, Jade would probably obliterate her, but I think it would be a, a great match still, but... I pretty much think that after Damage Control gets beat by Bailey, well, Bailey's gonna win, beat EO, and then the, and then uh, Asuka and Kyrie are gonna lose the women's tag team belts to I don't know who at Mania, and then what happens with the Black Lotus Triad after Mania? Do they stay hot or do they do they start fizzling out and then eventually get rid of uh, Dakota Kai, which they should have done in the first place, but. Now Bailey's on a, her own island. Like, who's gonna help her now? It's basically four on one. How is Bailey gonna beat beat Eo at this point? Unless she has some friends. The only friends she possibly could have is is Bianca, possibly Jade Cargill, probably Jade Cargill, and Naomi. She doesn't have any other friends, really. I don't know. Anyway, so I gave the tag title match. 2.5 out of 5 stars. Uh, and after the match, Roxy come, uh, comes in, attacks Lyra from behind, then grabs her arm, kind of pulls back on the ring post, then she jumps up, <laughs> snaps her arm, and like, basically breaks her arm over the turnbuckle. Well, the, well, not the turnbuckle per se, but like around the post. It was nasty. Hmm. I love this heel side, of, and this violent heel side of Roxy. Kind of gives me AJ Lee heel vibes. I love it. And, uh, uh, Ava Rain, I would think you should give Roxy her uh, title shot. I think, I think Lyra will actually tell Ava, like, I want Roxy to stand and deliver! I'll put the belt on the line, and then that's a bad idea, because Roxy's going to win the belt now. Because your title ring is shit. I love you, but your title ring is shit. So, Roxy will win the belt back, which she never really lost. So she went back for the second time, and then... Who she loses to? They beat the fuck out of me. I would have her lose to a returning face, Corey Jade. But that's going to be like... Months down the line, way like my like January, pretty much. Unless uh, Core uh, gets better by October, but I don't know. Right now, I don't know if Roxy wins. I don't know who beats her. It could be. Uh, I would. I would say Nikita Leon's, but she's always injury prone. I don't know when Nikita Leon's is coming back. Uh. I mean, you got a lot of women on the roster, like, uh, Kaylani Jordan, eh, not really, I don't think she's championship material. I give her the Lola Feist, finally, but she has to turn face. Which she could, but, uh, who else is on that roster? Um, uh, Fallon Henley? No. Blair Davenport? Maybe, but she has to turn face. Um, are we on a Grace? No. It would be nice, you know, for Santino purposes, but... Champion? No. She wouldn't hold it that long, either. Dia Hale? No. JC Jane? I could see that. But she has to turn face. I would lo I want... I wanted Lance Legend to win, uh, like, a week or so ago. They didn't fucking do it. Jacoby Jackson could win it, too. But I have to see what happens after Stan and Deliver, uh... Who is the champ? And if Roxy is the champ, who's her next? Who's her next challenger? But we move on with that. Uh yeah. So, uh, so Roxy breaks Lyra's arm, and that's it. After them, uh, then uh, she gets uh, put in a a uh, uh, stretcher, put in the ambulance, and sent to a local medical facility or well, hospital. Shawn Michaels he starts making a, he even made a cameo. I thought you were the GM. What are you doing there? Hmm. Moving on. Alright, then we get the Fallon Henley and Blair Davenport. Three and a half minutes suck fest. Did I say three and a half minutes suck fest? Pretty much. Uh, wasn't anything great. Uh, Sol Ruka comes, uh, comes back to take out player Davenport, who took her out and for basically over a year. 
And uh, she hits that, uh, her finisher, which didn't look good. She boxed her own finisher. How do you come back and box your own finisher? Like, it's just crazy. But anyway. So uh, that allows Fallon, Hen Fallon Henley to hit the Shining, uh, not the Shiniest Wizard, the Shining Wizard. One, two, three. He gets the win. Match sucked. And they gave it 2.25 out of 5 stars. So it looks like Sold Ruka is going to get into a few with Blair Davenport. And I don't give a shit. And that's it. All right, there we go to the back. JC Jane is with Chase Yu. Jasmine Nix is there. Uh, JC yells at Mr. Chase for uh, losing the tag team title match. And then Dia Hale comes in after smoking another bowl. Uh, comes in to talk about the brawl that she had with Izzy, uh, Izzy Dane and Kiana James. And she's like, we got a tag match next week. Uh, JC, you're my partner, and JC's like, uh, no, I'm busy next week. Fuck you, you're on your own. So, does Jasmine Nix take her place? That'd be nice, but I don't think she will. Yeah, I think we're gonna get a two-on-one handicap match. Sucks for you, Thea Harold. you got no friends. And you got no boyfriend either, because you fucked that date up. You crazy bitch. She's a crazy bitch! Anyway. There's a song called Crazy Bitch, but I forgot who, who sang that damn song. Um, I can't think of the name. It's on the tip of my tongue, and I can't think of it. They, uh, the, the band is sings all lit up again. I can't think of the name of it. I'm all lit up again. I love the cocaine. I love the cocaine. That's Tony Khan's theme song. Pretty much. Anyway, move on. Alright, so let's see if the Hale can find a partner next week. Alright, so I gave that 2.25 out of 5 stars. Then we go to Ava Rain's office. Ava Rain has her hair up. She she rocks rough and stuff with her afro puffs. Rage! Rock on with your bad self. No, not Rage from Death Row Records. But she had her hair like, like Rage did. She had some Afro puffs. It's still looking good. She's talking with Gigi Dolan, another hot piece of ace. Uh, and then Ariana Grace comes in. And, you know, Gigi wants to fight her. And Ariana's like, I'm not going to fight you. But then eventually agree to a match next week. And she says, I'll fight you only if, if I can bring out Dolan's inner beauty when she wins. And Gigi's like, okay. So what is that supposed to mean? Like, Gigi's gonna go from not being goth to, like, some hot chick or, like, some uh, beauty pageant winner? That's gonna look weird. I'm goth, look at me! It's weird. Alright, so I gave that 2.25 out of 5 stars. Then we go outside into the dreaded parking lot. Well, nobody got hurt. But Sean Spears leaves the building. And he ca he's counting on a match with Rich Holland next week. And he's going to teach him to embrace his rage. So, that match is official for next week. And we got that. And we move on. Alright, then we go back inside the, the Capitol Wrestling Center. And we have Catchpoint 3.0, Drew Gulak. Mr. Regal's son, Charlie Dempsey, the Heritage Cup champion, as he won the belt uh, the cup last week from Noam Dar. We have Miles Bourne and Oro Menza, so all, all, all of them are in the ring. Drew Gulak brags about Charlie, uh, Charlie Dempsey's big win last week. And then uh, Dempsey says, this is what wrestling is all about. And then Damon Kemp says... Uh, the catch, the catch clause means anyone can defend the cup. Oh, Freebird rules, huh? Anyway. Uh, they're also in the, in the tag team tournament. Which is apparently a thing. I guess. And then out of nowhere we hear the music of Mr. Eagle. Uh, Regal! Uh, uh, Regal! Uh, War Games! So, Mr. Regal comes out. And I'm like, oh, father-son promo. Here we go. Love it. 
The fans are like, that's your father! It would have been funny if it was like, if the, it was like the other half like, no, it's not! Kind of like Eddie and, uh, you know, Eddie and Ray with Dominic. It's my son, I say! It's my son! Don't you ever tell me I am not his dad, Mr. Gilmore Pino. Oh, I never said he wasn't your son. I never said that. I always knew he was your son. He's a fruit of your loins. I know. But why did you... Why did you doubt that? I never doubted it, Eddie. Come, come on, man. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Gilmore. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. You have a you have a great night. Get out of here. Adios. Okay, get out. Who was that guy? Anyway. Uh, so then, so we, Regal, puts over the Heritage Cup, says it represents all of the British and European wrestlers who came before him, and, you know, he's praising the cup, and he's like, that, it's like, this thing means, means the world to me, blah, 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 and then, and then uh, Vigo's son grabs the mic. He says, I'll defend this cup better than you ever could. Ooh. Hey, now. So, we, Mr. so Papa, Papa Rigo says, I'll be watching, sunshine. Ooh. Yo, imagine freaking Rigo joining the cat. I think Rigo is going to either manage, manage his son... Oh, he's gonna join up with Gulak's group. I think that's a bad idea. Dempsey should. Uh, well, sorry. Mr. Eagle's son, Charlie Dempsey, should freaking break away from Catchpoint 3.0 and go on, go out on his own and have his dad come out and manage him. He doesn't have to get you know physical or anything. Maybe with the brass knocks, but I don't know. But I wouldn't even have him freaking fight or anything. Maybe just knock somebody out. Yeah, we got that. So that was actually some interesting shit. And I liked it. So I gave it three out of five stars. And that's that. Alright, then we go to Metaphor's uh, locker room. Where we have the former cha former Heritage Cup champion, Norm Dar, basically catatonic once again. Like Weekend and Bernie's. He's sitting down, he has his cat hat down like... And then like, Aura Menz is trying to like, wake him up. And then, nice legend! Who looked amazingly hot in that camouflage? Oh, you can lash me all you want, girl. Oh boy. Anyway, she she sits down next to him and says, "No, Mr. Dar." And then, after, out of nowhere, Norm's like, like he picks him up and then kind of flips up flips up his hat and then he like he like magically wakes up. He's like, "Oh, Lash, my friend." Give me a hug. Yay! And then the old man's like, Yay, buddy! <laughs> and then Dar says, It's off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. No. So he says, It's off to bigger and better things. Whatever that means. Alright, so we got that. Where the hell was your Dakota Jackson? Would you have an appointment? We have my dick. Mr. Jackson, if you're nasty. I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. Ooh, I am for real. Never meant to make your daughter cry. I apologize a trillion times. I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. Ooh, I am for real. Alright, uh, you gotta love Outcast, man. You gotta love him. I like the way you move. Bam, bam, bam. Can we get Outcast to come back with a new album, please? Somebody find Big Boy and Andre 3000. Let's get it done, man. Get that album done, man. Come on. You don't have to make a double album like the last one you did. Just give me something. Give me, like, Atlians Part 2. Give me that, man. Cutting on some scissors. 
me and you, your mama and your cousin too. Well, we're gonna sip on do. I like Outcast. That's a good rap. That's good rap. Not that. Not this shit rap you see nowadays. Like people I can't understand. Like like uh. I don't know. It's shit rap like MGK shit rapper. Now he's like metal metal slash rap. I'm like you still suck. Like Little Wayne garbage. Wheezy, you go, you, you suck. Craig's not even that good anymore. Not that many good rappers out there now, man. Jay Z hasn't had an album out in like six thousand years. Eminem, I mean, yeah, yeah, I think Eminem had an album, uh, an album come out recently, or maybe a year or so ago. It wasn't that bad. Yeah, I, I love Eminem. I still like Eminem. Was you know. Not like the old school days when you had like Biggie and Tupac and Nas and N.W.A. and so many other great, you know, Ja Rule, Big Pun, Fat Joe. Lean back. Lean back. Ah, I miss that shit. Alright, so let's see what Mr. Noam Dar and Metaphor got up their sleeve in the next coming weeks. Look at that. Alright, so I get that uh, 2.5 out of 5 stars. Then we see Robbie E, you know, Mr. Stone, he's watching uh, Lexus King's promo, I think from last week, or I don't know when that was. He's not happy, so he's not happy with what Lexus King said about his kids. Uh-oh, don't mess with your kids. I got kids! Fuck your kids! Anyway, uh... And he wants Von Wagner to step aside so he can fight for his family. So Von's like, okay. Okay. I got your back. Okay. So you know what that means? Lexus King's gonna kick Robbie E's ass coming up soon. And we got that. Alright, so 2.5 out of 5 stars for that. And then after that, uh, we find out what's happening next week on the program, live. We got uh, Ariana Grace and Gigi Dolan. And we got, uh, what we got else next week? Oh, we got a Sean Spears and, uh, Sean Spears and Rich Holland. So that should be some, well, at least one of those two matches would be actually decent. And that's it. Alright, then we go to a main event of the evening. My cousin Tony D and Carmelo Hayes for a, for a shot at Ilya Dragunov and the NXT title at Stunned and Deliver. So Hayes, uh, Carmella comes out with max security guards. What are you from Call of Duty? What is this? Tony comes out with new music and a new theme. Would have been nice if it was a rock and roll theme, but it's Italian, so you can't really have an Italian rock and roll. But anyway, blah 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 blah. Uh, I was thinking this match would end in controversy, and then we get a triple threat match, which I thought that was going to be from last week. But like Tony is like, oh, one of us is gonna fight, fight, him, fight, face you. And I think what happened when 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 Melo pushed uh, pushed Tony, and then Tony inadvertently hit Ilya in the face with, with that elbow. I think you you knew that you were gonna see Tony D and Ilya, but it could change. Who knows? But anyway, pretty good match. Uh, Melo hits the first the. Uh, Grabs the first 48 for a near fall. Goes up top looking for nothing but the bottom of the net. But then Trick Williams music hits and he's coming out. And no. All, all distraction. And hate and Carmelo looks stupid. Stupid. Too stupid. Turns around. Tony D grabs. Uh, hits a swing buster. Then he picks him up and hits. Forget about it. Goes for the cover. One, two, three, and 13 and a half minutes. My cousin Tony D is going to stand and deliver in Philly and will face Ilya Dragunov for the NXT World Heavyweight Championship. Is he going to win? I mean, not, it'd be nice as in Philly where another great Italian guy game comes from. That's Rocky Balboa. The only good didn't come out of Philly. 
besides ECW. But I think it's and Philly cheesesteak. Geno's not Pat's. Go to Geno's. I'm sorry, Issa. We go to Geno's. You can go to Pat's. We'll, we'll meet up at the hotel. I mean, sorry. Uh, anyway, you go to Pat's. I'll go to Geno's. Oh, we. Go, I'll go to Geno's. I'll meet you at Pat's. It's like this is a cheesesteak. I don't eat cheesesteaks, but I'll. I'll get a nice roast beef hero. They should sell that to the dudes. They probably do. I think they do. And anyway, I'm going to get a roast beef sandwich at Gino's. I'll meet you at Pat's. It's like, this is a cheesesteak. But anyway, three each All right, so uh, Tony D gets the win. He faces Ilya at... at Stand Deliver. And Melo, well, you look stupid. Don't you? And that's it. Match was all right. Two and a half out of five stars. After the match, Tony D gets on the mic and says, I'm sorry for what, what happened. I'm sorry about that, Mello. But I'm a forgiving Don. I'm going to give you a present there, there, Mello. Here's your present. So we hear Trick Williams' music again. And, and the uh, freaking bodyguards are like going, like looking up the ramp like idiots again. And then Trick comes from the other entrance, or like the like the back, not, no, not the side entrance. Comes in the ring, starts beating the Fuck out of Mello. Then the security guards come in. They get beaten up. And then Mello comes to try to attack from behind. And Trick, like, turns right around. And Mello's like, whoa! And then he leaves the ring. And he gets, uh, consoled by these security guards. And freaking, freaking Booker T's going completely berserk. As soon as this music is, what? Oh yeah, man! Trick Willie! Shemmel! Oh, that's, that's Wade Barrett. <laughs> Shemmel! Oh, yeah! I like it. Trick Willie! Alright, so it looks like we got Trick Williams and Carmelo Hayes. Definitely gonna be a banger at Stand and Deliver. I don't know if it's gonna be a straight up one on one match. Might be a street fight. I think it might be a Philly street fight. But. I, I hope Trick wins that match at Stand and Deliver. I don't think it's going to last. Uh, I don't think it's going to be like a one and done type thing. But I think Trick wins. And then maybe at Battleground. Which is the next pay-per-view in um, May. May. Uh, was it May 20, uh, May 26th. Actually. We got that. We got that. Um. I think May is supposed to be a big month, I heard. May or July, I think. I think I think they said July 5th is uh, the Saudi Arabia pay-per-view. No. Wait. I think, it's, I think it said July. No, June, actually. June, sorry. June is going to be a big month. Because the, you got... Uh, I think I think they got money to bank, and then you got then you got uh, not probably not of champions in Saudi Arabia and not uh money to banks in Toronto, Forbidden Door at the end of June in New York City, and then I don't know what they're doing in July, but anyway, August is gonna be a big humongous month. We all know that. Beginning of August, the first weekend of August, you got SummerSlam from Cleveland, which I think is going to be announced. It's going to be Cleveland. Uh, anyway, if I have, you see someone on my nose, it's a little pimple, but it's fine. I got to see it on my nose. It happens. Uh, any, but anyway. Huh. Uh, anyway, so yeah, SummerSlam is going to be August, I forgot the actual date, but it's going to be the first weekend of August in Cleveland at the Cleveland Brown Stadium. So, the Dog Pound is going to be rocking in Cleveland, if we will, not even football season yet. Got that. A couple weeks later, we got, uh, we got All In in Wembley. The week, uh, and then the week after that is Bash in Berlin on that Saturday. It's Labor Day weekend. And then September the 1st, we got All Out in 
probably be in Chicago. So, that whole month, that, you know, the summer is going to be red hot. And even in May, we got, we're got coming up on May after WrestleMania. I think we have something coming up at the end of April, I think. I don't know what it is, but let's see. Uh, you know, May is going to be a big month, double or nothing on, I don't know what date that might be, but it might be the same day as NXT Battleground. Who's going to, what are you going to watch? Hmm. Depending on, I would, I would bet that both shows are going to be at the same fucking time. Like, fuck that, I'm watching double or nothing. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna watch two streams at the same fucking time. I mean, if you want to do that, great. Knock yourself out. But I would. I would probably think that Tony Khan would. When I don't even think he would dare to do to, to have a pay per view on the same day as Battleground. I would think he had that on a Saturday night. So screw. Uh, forget. Uh, yeah, he did it on a Saturday night. Fuck Collision. Had double or nothing on the twenty, uh, twenty the twenty fifth of May, twenty sixth. You have battleground, so you have a, a great Memorial Day weekend of wrestling action. And then you have Monday Night Raw, the Memorial Day episode. That's that's your Memorial Day weekend right there. Boom. You don't have to put you don't have to really put double or nothing on a Sunday night. Put it May twenty fifth. Bing, bang, boom, done. You're going to Vegas. Then you have, you have Rampage, you have Rampage and, um, and Dynamite from Vegas that whole week. Wednesday night, and then you have Friday night, which is, should be live. And then you have, and Saturday, you have the pay-per-view from Vegas. From probably the MGM Grand Arena, or whatever, some, some place in Vegas. And then the next, and then the next show is in um, Bat where's Battleground at? Like Tennessee or some, like Kentucky or something like that. Some Southern Hick town, six state. With it, Alabama. No, and we got that. Anyway, so we got that. So a lot of action coming this summer. I'm gonna be here through the entire summer. Well, not all of it, but you know, because you know I got my vacation in July and part of August. But it's after SummerSlam. August after SummerSlam. Right, and right before uh right before Bash in Berlin and and um all out and all in. I'm not I'm not going away for s I would go I was gonna thinking of going away for Labor Day weekend, but uh, no. I'm not gonna go away and, and miss fucking Bash in Berlin. I'm gonna miss all out. Hell no. Hell no. But July, depending on, uh, I am going away at the end of uh, end of July. I'm taking July Fourth weekend off, so no videos, nothing. That's it. I mean, I know I know East is doing a, gonna be doing SmackDown July the fifth, but I might chime in. But I will be pretty much in and not even in the state. Where I be? Huh? You won't know. I might be down south, I might be mid-Atlantic south, I might be in, in the west coast. Even even at the end of July. Pretty much near the end of July. I'll, I will be, in, I'm taking a week off. I'm my usual week off. And then people are like, ah, oh, no, you're going to be in East's chat. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, so what? It's still a vacation. I'm not doing videos. I'm just gonna say hello every once in a while. Just like, hey, I'm on vacation. Just say hi. I got and I got some free time. So what's the bad, What's the big fucking deal? If I'm on vacation and I have some free time, you know, during the night when I'm not really doing anything, or at least you know I'm like I'm at a bar. It's like, hey, I'm at a bar watching Raw. Just came in to say hello. Pretty much, I'll be in and out of the, ch the chat most of the, most of that week. Not all of it, but 
just to say hi. I can't do that. It's so hard. Yeah, I know my dick is hard, but it's so hard that I can't have a, I can, I can't go on vacation. I just chime in every once in a while. Would it be every, you know, every night. I don't have to be in it every night. I'll just say hello, like during the, you know, at the start of the show. It's like, hey, you know, I'm just saying hello. Enjoy my vacation. I'll see you guys next week. I'll be back full time, pretty much. But it is what it is. So yeah, the summer I will definitely, no cap, I will be gone for pretty much a week at the end of end of July. I will be taking July Fourth weekend off from doing videos. Uh, but if there's a pay review, I might I might just like I'll do the the uh, predictions early. You know, there's like added matches. I'll just write it in the comment section, and um, I would do the review probably that night I come back, but. But when I when I am on vacation, I am not doing videos at all. But check check out my but check me out on social media that whole uh, most of the vacation. I might put up um, a tweet uh, with just my Raw SmackDown rating. Nothing really to talk about unless there's something big. You know, like I said, if I have some free time during the day, I'll I'll be incommunicado at all, at pretty much. From like the time I get up until like pretty much like the time when Raw is going on the air. So I'll probably be eating dinner and we'll be back somewhere. Um, or I might just be at the whole be at my hotel or be just chilling. With with the missus or or, or doing whatever. But I'll be around. I mean, I'll, I'll still check my social media here and there, but I'm not going to be on 24-7, 365, like dumb fucks that think they know everything, but they don't. Well, you're going to be home. I don't, I'm not. You can think I am, but I'm not. And when you look stupid, then you're going to like, eh, you know. But I'm going to be gone most of the summer, so. Keep obsessing over me because your little tricks ain't going to work. They failed. They've been failing the last couple of years, so. Think you're tough? You're not. So I can care less about it. But anyway, me move on with that. We'll talk about the summer. When the summer comes in July. So. Pretty much to be at the end of June, early July, we'll be talking about the summertime. with we'll summertime plans, my friends. But it's March the 6th right now, so. It is what it is. Anyway. That's it. Uh, so. Trick is back, and he's gunning for Melo and Revenge. That's it. All right, guys, that's all I got to say for right now. Thanks for watching. Uh, I gave Roblox uh, 7.25 out of 10 stars. Let me know what you guys think of the show down below in the comments section. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and uh, my other channels down in the description box. Follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, Twitter and Instagram links will be down below as well. If you're on Facebook, just type in Peter Gilmore, you'll find me somewhere. And uh, just be real if you're not, fuck off and, and rotten in hell. Uh, and don't forget to share the video over the internet. And don't forget, once again, to tap that fucking bell, turn on all notifications, you don't miss the next one. Because if you do, you're SOL. And you know what that means? Ha! <laughs> and that's it. Alright, guys, thanks for watching. I'm going to uh, the bed. This um, this is already being pre-recorded pre -recorded right now. And um, by the time you see this, I will be asleep. So be pretty much up by the morning time. And that's pretty much it. So I have a day off anyway. So because I got some, uh, I got some errands to run. I got a couple. I got a doctor appointment, so I got to do that. So I took the day off. But I'm back on Thursday. Gonna make the money you wish you had. And that's it. Alright guys, thanks for watching. And until next time, if you're not down with that, well, well, that's just too goddamn bad, my friends. It's just too goddamn bad because you can't do anything about it. And if you don't like it, too fucking bad. Because we, me, Peter Joseph, and the greatest group in the world, the Purge and the Prophecy, we're real, and you wish you knew who we all were. You don't know, and you never will know. But 
Me and the prophecy and the purge, the greatest group of people this side of God's green earth. We're better than you and you fucking know it. You can't stop it. That rhymes. But anyway, if you're not down with us, then we got three words for you. Fuck you, man. That's it. Until next time, go fuck yourselves. Peace.